Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded vehicles in the GTA Online Sport class in terms of lap time. As always, the position counter is in the top left with the best lap time the vehicle achieved in the top right, and for this 2020 series I'll be showcasing the non-raceable vehicles first. So even though for example the Paragon R Armoured is in the sports class and would be competitive for races, since it can't be used in regular sports races it's not going to be included in the main list. We start the regular raceable vehicles list with the Blister Compact in 70th place overall. This video only focuses on track performance, so if you're interested in top speed where braking, cornering and acceleration aren't relevant, check the link in the description for the top speed testing series, and if you want to know more information about this testing including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally, have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. This video lists all vehicles and is correct as of the Casino Heist update. For any sports cars added after that or other classes of cars, check the playlist linked in the second line of the description and feel free to check out my Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to support this work and get testing results of any new cars a little bit early. So the sports class, 72 vehicles in this entire class, 70 of which are raceable. I don't think any single class has ever exemplified how broken the vehicle class system is in GTA Online than the sports class. Ever since the Blister Compact was added to it back in 2014, when the regular Blister is in the Compact class, the sports class has seen more additions that could have gone elsewhere than anything else. That's obviously led to a quite astounding and ridiculous 70 strong class where if you own one of each sports car, you'd have significant trouble choosing a car at the end of the list in a race lobby since you'd run out of time to choose it before getting to it. You could even say that something like the Fusilade should have been in the Coupes class even back in 2013 when the game was released, as well as the Elegy RH8 for example dominating the class for so long because really it should have been in the Supers class. But since then, there have been so many other additions that could have gone elsewhere. So many cars that could have gone in the compacts class, sedans, SUVs, coupes, even muscle and sports classics, which are already pretty big on their own. The poor coupes class has 13 cars, has only ever had two DLC vehicles, one of which is just a drop top version of the other one, and hasn't had a DLC car for four years yet we have over 70 cars in the sports class where, certainly in terms of lap time and top speed for racing, about 65 of them are useless. So we've got the lap times all here, we're going to go through the entire list, it's going to, it's obviously a long one, there's a lot of cars we're going to, you know, as always with these videos we try to get up to the top 20 as quickly as possible with very quick clips of each car, but there's just so many that you know, it, it's going to take a bit of time. And we've got so many vehicles. To be fair to the sports class, one of the benefits of having so many vehicles in it is that you can you can sort of make subclasses within it. You've got a lot of vehicles that we've just seen that all have a 1 minute 8 kind of lap time. Then we take a little bit of a jump to the Comet Safari in 51st place with a 1 minute 7.4. And then there's a few vehicles that all get sort of low 1 minute 7 lap times and that sort of pattern shows itself quite a lot throughout the spot class and really that's just a consequence of there being so many cars. If you were to take all the vehicles in the game and put them all together in one big class you would naturally get a lot of vehicles that are very very close together. So that is one benefit but obviously one major negative is the fact that we have a lot of vehicles that they're just they're not going to do any good in in sports class races but you know we're still seven seconds per lap even if 47th place and we've already had you know over 20 vehicles we're still seven seconds per lap slower than the ultimate number one that we'll see at the end of the video and obviously we are going to be having top speed for the sports class as well a 2020 top speed video which is going to show all 72 cars in terms of top speed as well so Obviously, check that out if you want. Uh, if you want that information as well, at this point we're into sort of the the rally subclass of the sports class. We've got a few rally vehicles like the Karuma GB200, the Omnis, the Tropos Rally, the Comet Safari. In certain places, can actually be a little OP because it's got really good acceleration. But in general, there's quite a few rally cars in the sports class that are all on similar pace. 
But then again, as always is the case with the sports class, there's other vehicles towards the top that, you know, d destroy everything. So you have to, when you're dealing with subclasses and sport, the sports class in general, you've kind of got to make a distinction of, okay, well, we're not going to allow these specific vehicles to be used. And that way you can get a lot of vehicles in close proximity to each other and have a really balanced race if you exclude one or two from the top. And we'll certainly see that we're sort of, even at 39th place here with the Alpha, we're sort of getting towards that that level of sports car lap time that used to be around competitive. You know, if you took out the Elegy back in 2013, 2014, the Elegy obviously dominated the sports class for so long. If you took out the Elegy, you would be left with some of the vehicles that we're seeing here, the Felira, the Carbon is there. Obviously the Sentinel Classic is more of a not a new vehicle, but there's a lot of new sports cars that have also fit into that, what you would consider to be a standard sports car level of lap time. When we're getting towards the end of the video, we're gonna sort of see super sports cars really. But at this point, this is kind of normal sports cars akin to the, the classic, the, 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 the sort of the normal sports classics class before we got the super classics, which I talked about in the sports classics video. Things like the Shafter V12, the one minute five, one minute four levels of lap time, even going to sort of one minute three levels, so many cars in this area that are very, very close. So if you take out the top few, you're left with quite a big, you know, 20, 25 vehicles, all within around, you know, one to two seconds of each other. And you can choose any one. Some cars will be better in certain situations than others. For example, the 770 has a decent top speed, so it can compete with vehicles that have a lower top speed, but, you know, a fraction quicker around a track. It, it's really interesting, the sports class around this area, and this is where it really shines. It's just that, you know, if this was only what the sports class had, all of the 30, 40 vehicles that are slower than all of this were elsewhere. Vehicles like the Lynx in the Coupes class, you know, the Strider put into SUVs, all this kind of stuff. And then the top vehicles put in the Supers class, even without making new classes entirely, it would make the sports class a lot better. And it would still be pretty big, let's be honest. But obviously we've got 70 vehicles, and it's just it's just a big old mess. It's not as much of a mess as the off-road class, I guess, in terms of the vehicles that you can use and things like that. Speaking of that, um, that you can use the Sterling GT, which is in the Sport Classics class, in Sport Class races. I think it gets a one minute six lap time, so we would have already seen it in the list. Um, and that that's why they made that a thing. I don't know. The, 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 the Sterling GT came along and it absolutely destroyed everything in the sports classics class. And then a few months later, they made it available to use in sports races as well, but they didn't remove it from the sports classics class. So it, it you know, why, why that's available, who knows why they make the decisions that they do at Rockstar. But yeah, something I thought I should keep in mind and let you guys know. So we haven't even hit the top 20 yet and we're already seeing the 9F and the 9F used to be a, a top 10 vehicle back in the day so we, we've have had a lot of you know you've seen a lot of vehicles like the the Raiden and the Komoda and things like that relatively new vehicles that have worked their way into this subclass the Flash GT here makes it into 20th place with a, with a 103.8 and this is obviously a lot quicker than the the sub rally class that we saw earlier so if you're doing a rally race you have to either say everybody can have a flash gt or remove it completely and then people are free to choose an omnis or a trot boss things like that and then we've got some of the the old guard of sports cars that are still around you know still in the top 20 these would have been top 10 and right on the pace as, as long as you got rid of the elegy back in the day you were generally racing with things like this the massacre the massacre race car the jesters the feltzers things like that that was the top of the sports class, and that's what we're seeing now. A one minute, just you know, kidding that one minute three level of lap time. Certainly, these are a little bit quicker than some of the vehicles that we saw earlier, like the 770, the Serrano, even the 9Fs. But you can compete in those other vehicles with these, and we've also got vehicles like the 8F Drafter that they, 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 they're very, very new, but they also fit into that sports car level of. Uh, lap time as well you know what the, the classic sports cars so 
15th for the Schlagen GT. Really nice car to drive this one. I definitely recommend it. It's a great driving experience. Good top speed as well, as we'll see in the top speed testing video. And then in 14th place, we've got the LG Retro Custom, which, yes, the LG Retro Custom, the 900K, I think it is, upgrade to the, from the LG RH8 is slower than the LG RH8. It's not got good top speed either, so if you if you want a quick LG, stick with the regular one. Uh, the, the Jester Race Car is a very, very competent vehicle, certainly one of the better ones in that old sports cars class. And then the Neon in 12th place has incredible acceleration. Obviously, it's an electric vehicle, that's where it gets its, uh, it, its benefit. Top speed, it's very poor because it's an electric vehicle, but it can be an interesting thing in races to use the Neon and, and just fly away from people in the corners uh, on acceleration. Now, the Feltzer misses out on a top 10 position in 11th place. It just drops out of the top 10 with a 103.2. Uh, and it's a shame, really, to see the Feltzer drop out of the top 10, but there's been so many new decently quick vehicles that have been added like the Soton Classic with a 102.6 and we're taking sort of bigger jumps in lap time we've seen very very close lap times from a lot of vehicles for the past 30 or 40 cars and now we're going to start to see a few bigger jumps so the LG RH8 does manage to sneak into the top 10 still it's still there in ninth place with a 102.5 Considering it's a free vehicle, you can certainly do a lot worse, uh, and it's just a testament to how quick the LG has always been in the sports class. But there are eight vehicles now that are quicker than the LG, starting with the Jugular with a 102.3. This is the fastest four-seat vehicle in the game in terms of lap time, not in terms of top speed. That is the Tauros, but the Jugular isn't far off the Tauros for top speed, so you might as well just have the Jugular because it's much quicker in the corners anyway. So the Jugular is certainly the quickest four-seat vehicle. And then the Paragon R in seventh place with a 102.2. These are some quick lap times. It is slightly quicker than the Armoured version, the Paragon R, the regular version. Not that much to choose between them, though, in terms of overall lap time and top speed as well. Coming into the top six, the Issy Sport is another vehicle like the Flash GT, where if you're going to do a rally race with that rally subclass, just leave the Issy Sport out. It's very, very good off-road, quicker than the Flash GT, handles bumps very nicely, and can even be very competitive at the top on certain very tight, twisty, bumpy, regular circuits. Really quick, it can be really quick in certain situations, the Issy Sport. But the top five, we've got the Comet SR in fifth place. The 101.9 is the first vehicle to break that one minute two lap time barrier. But it's very much off the pace of the top few cars. This is the kind of, it, it, this shows how we ramp up the level of lap time that even fifth place can't really compete. So fourth place, we've got the Neo. This is a first vehicle to break that one minute one barrier. So, you know, we've taken a full second off what we just saw from the Comet SR in terms of lap time. And that is huge. And that, that is why these this sort of, the top four especially, and then certainly the top one when we actually get to it are just so much quicker than everything else and the only really viable vehicles that you can use. Not the nicest driving experience for the Neo, to be honest. You, you could probably have much better driving experiences like with our third place vehicle, the Pariah, with a 1 minute 0.8, slightly quicker than the Neo, but a much, much higher top speed, which we'll see uh, obviously from the top speed testing video. It, it, it's, it, you know, it's a great vehicle, the Pariah, probably should be in the supers class just like all of this top four maybe or, or a few of the vehicles here and yeah it, it does well to get that third place it's it's a challenging car to drive because it is so quick in a straight line and it does have a lot of grip but with it being rear wheel drive it it's it, it's a challenge to get the most out of it but it's a really nice car certainly one of my favorite cars to drive in the game uh, and and yeah does really well to obviously keep that third place in the sports class the reason it's in third is because second place now falls to the Morgon, which this gets its lap time from the turbo upgrade with the iFruit phone app. So if it didn't have that, it would still be in, I think it's either third or fourth place. It's still going to be a top five vehicle. But the turbo upgrade that you can't normally get in Los Santos Customs, you can apply to this vehicle with the iFruit phone app 
and it will go quicker in terms of acceleration and top speed its top speed is bad because you know it is just another electric vehicle but its acceleration is so good and it has a lot of traction that that's enough to put up put it up into second place overall around a track at least for the sports class but ultimately the number one is the Itali GTO with a lap time that's scarcely believable of 59.727 seconds it's the only sports car to break the one minute barrier and that previously used to be only reserved for the very top supercars at this point feel free to subscribe if you haven't already for regular lap time and top speed testing videos and updates when new cars are released and check out other classes in the playlist but the Itali GTO is just ridiculous it, 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 it loves the bumps so it gets a much better speed increase from the bumps when you're going over curbs and things like that it's not the nicest thing to drive in the world but it is certainly a lot more manageable now after the casino DLC changes to advanced handling flags than it used to be so you can certainly it, it, it's it's at least drivable now but it's still a bit of a challenge when you're going over bumps and for it to get a lap time of 59.7 seconds for a sports car is insane I mean you know, when I was saying earlier that some of these top vehicles should really be in the supers class, the Itali GTO, okay, it's not going to compete with a Krieger or an Emirates at the very top of the supers class, but that's the same lap time as things like an RE7B, uh, an XA21, an Autark. They all get 59 second lap times as well. So the Itali GTO could compete in the top 10 of supercars, and, and it is in the top 10 of all cars in the game in terms of lap time at least so you know it's absolutely crazy and obviously we're seeing the difference here between the Itali GTO in very you know the very top position and the blister compact in last place 70th place 70 sports cars and really you're only going to want to use one of them in pretty much all situations unless you've got a, a circuit that has a lot of long straights and, and is very top speed dependent then the Itali GTO isn't going to be the best option and you're going to want to check out the top speed video for that instead but you know the, the blister compact kind of uh, signifies how how ridiculous the sports class is it, it's more than 15 seconds per lap slower than the number one vehicle and there's 68 different vehicles in between them it's just such a mess and so many vehicles and so many of them are useless and it's just such a shame that some of these vehicles haven't been put elsewhere and made the coupes think of how incredible the coupes class could be and how much fun it could be even not taking into account ruining the class with lap times or anything just having more vehicles in that class and having a more wide variety of vehicles and across the board as well so many vehicles that could go elsewhere but everything just gets thrown into the sports class and it's kind of ridiculous so there you go that's pretty much it for this video hopefully it's been a help consider supporting on patreon or become a youtube member if you want to get testing results early and remember to read the description for more info comment with your thoughts like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful and subscribe for more thank you all so much for watching i really do appreciate it and i'll see you next time